Alrighty, well, hello everyone, and welcome back to the show. Uh, in the live chat right now, we have DM Scientist Chemist Auto Mechanic Wing and Icarus. Hey guys, how's it going? And joining me today is my host and co-host, gonna go for it, Peter. Good evening, good night, good morning, wherever you are. Uh, All these yeah. time traveling heathens watching the show. Having some having some tech problems at the moment, but hopefully we can we can still make it a show. Well, we'll For see. For once, it's not me. Oh, and Dragon Spartan ninety official, hello. And also joining us is uh, Neslig, who is one of my editors. Welcome back. It's good to be back. We missed you last week. Mm -hmm. Oh, two weeks ago. All right. I don't on. Was it oh, last last week or two weeks ago? Was I, I, I was it. I was it two weeks ago. Yes, yes. Last week I was. Last week. It. Yes, you're yeah, right. last, last week. Last week. Yeah. Time isn't real, but uh, yeah. Oh, Jamie E. Hello. Welcome, welcome. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> so it's been an interesting week. Uh, I will share. I will first share some personal news with all of you guys and gals in the interwebverse. Uh, tomorrow, I'm defending my thesis. So, yay. <laughs> my master's thesis, not doctoral thesis. So, that'll be tomorrow. So, that's fun. Um, not stressing about that at all or anything. Ha, ha, ha. Is it also the official graduation point? Like, after that, you have officially graduated, right? Or not? Or not? Uh, yes. Yeah. So, all of my classes are done. Uh, this is the last thing standing in the way of officially graduating. So, yes. So, yeah. Woo. And mm -hmm. then the actual graduation is in uh, mid-December. So, yay. We should well, plan, I think we should plan a uh, celebration stream <laughs> for that. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, we'll, we'll have our, uh, our Thursday stream that week, uh, like normal, mm -hmm. I think. So. Maybe we can celebrate it during that. I'm just looking at my cat. I don't know what he's doing. He's not usually in here with me when we have the streams. Um, and we have another furry friend on screen also. Yes. Someone decided to jump it. And can I be on camera too? Hold on. Hold on. Can I be on camera too? I just want to be on camera too. Why is it always during this show that you figure out that you want to do something? What? What? <laughs> ah! Nope. <laughs> and now someone has the zoomies. Uh, <laughs> the other uh, thing that I wanted to go over before we get into um, our stream is uh, an article, uh, or well, I should say, um, Erica uh, Guts It Given posted an article on Twitter today. Uh, the <laughs> um i'm really professional my dog isn't <laughs> that i thought was very funny so um for, you, for you new americans it. who are here and it's not very many of us we're outnumbered by the dutch i think on the show uh but for those of us americans here um uh, the um House of Representatives finally has a speaker. Uh, the House has been in turmoil for, mm -hmm. uh, well, off and on throughout this year. Because uh, we, it, earlier this year, about nine months ago, we had um, uh, McCarthy, who was uh, chosen to be Speaker of the House, and he did that for a while. And now he just recently got ousted um, by some far right Republicans. And then again, we're back to, um, you know, who we're going to put in the house. Well, the Republicans have finally uh, rallied around a speaker who is every bit as extreme as you might expect. Uh, a young earth creationist, um, uh, uh, you know, anti, um, anti-choice, um, you know, says all kinds of crazy stuff about uh, like school shootings, uh, blaming them on evolution, uh, which is, why we which is why uh, we wanted to bring this article here today and that it talks a bit about that uh, if you could put up that uh, article please okay 
Yeah, yeah. new speaker Mike Johnson blamed school shootings on the teaching of evolution. So this isn't, he didn't do this today. This is an article that was posted about a speech he gave back in 2016. So uh, while preaching a sermon in 2016, newly elected GOP speaker Mike Johnson blamed mass shootings on the teaching of evolution. Johnson, I think it should be Johnson's. Or, oh, hold on a second. One sec. Amuse yourselves. Sorry, I'm back. I knew there was a reason I don't let my cat in here when we're doing shows. Okay. I, I should do the uh, same Johnson's thing with my, my friend, dog. Furry friends own everything. Yeah, exactly. I, I uh, we're delivering a sermon titled Preserving Liberty at Christian Center Shreveport, which I'll dox myself. That's me. I live in Shreveport <laughs> in 2016, in which he promoted his legal ministry. You scroll down a little bit, please, Peter. That's that's op opposed to his illegal ministry. I mean, so fun fact: there are some churches that that are like super ultra right wing. Um, that so there's a law, or in theory, there's a a law that, or ruling, I guess, that in in the U.S. Um, churches should not be allowed to talk about politics from the pulpit because i mean we have this whole thing called separation of church and state of course the churches don't care about this a lot of them do talk about politics and there are some churches who actually will film themselves talking about politics and send it to the irs yeah. and the irs does nothing which is kind of insane johnson claimed the united states was founded as a christian nation and then god was replaced over time for human reasoning Johnson then said when in the late 1960s came, uh, when the late 1960s came. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. on the grammar. Hold on. It, he he mm -hmm. said God was replaced? So we have a new yes, God. God has been replaced. We're, we're under a, another new covenant now? What, what did they replace him I guess with? So. Yeah, it's the countercultural revolution, Woodstock, peace, and drugs. Now, mm. I'm. I understand most of those, but like, I don't know why you throw peace in there. Wasn't Jesus yeah. all about peace? Um, yeah, no, no. Jesus was mm -hmm. not about peace. That's a common misconception. Jesus was oh. clear. He said, I'm not here to bring peace. I'm here to bring a sword. So, no, we need to have war because Jesus said so. Ah, okay. My apologies. My it's bad. All in the, it's, it's all in also recent news about. Yeah, I was not also recent news about like uh, like evangelical pastors uh, like, uh, uh, complaining about some uh, like some members of the church saying that what Jesus said was too woke. Yes, that mm -hmm. was yes, that was a uh, a story that came out recently. It was very funny um, because you know you don't really realize how much of it is a grift until an article like that comes out. Um, and like, and then you, you kind of are taken aback almost by just how bold it is, how blatant that, you know, these guys don't really care. It's not about Christianity. Ooh. It's about power. Right. That's what it's about ultimately. Um, whoops. uh, and further undermine religion and morality by introducing things like no fault divorce laws and legalized abortion. Okay. For reference, for anyone who's who's unaware, when conservatives, especially Christian conservatives, get mad about no-fault divorce laws, what they are saying without saying it is they would prefer a country where women have no autonomy and mm -hmm. cannot leave abusive husbands. That's what they're saying. Yeah, what they're saying. It, also, it, it also goes the other way. Like, if... If uh, there are situations where the the, the the man, the husband, is a victim, yeah. then they, yeah, they can also leave. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it, yes, one hundred percent. If the man is getting is also getting abused, he can't leave. This no no fault divorce hurts everyone. It hurts both sides. It does not help anyone. It is only uh, like a wet dream for um, 
the like uh, Christian nationalists, but they don't think through the actual implications of it. Like, what does it mean? They they don't care, of course, because again, it's As about it's power. Al it's almost like like once you're married, you're the property of somebody else, especially correct. in the case of the, the woman, basically. Right. Yeah. yeah. Correct. Yeah. yeah. Okay, we can keep going. This is also this is also why they don't like. So like, I, I I'm not going to generalize. Like, not not everybody thinks this, but I see a disturbing number of people not getting that you can rape your spouse. Like, yes. Some oh, that's people just well, don't, yeah. 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 Some so people, we you some, have some to, people think it's impossible. You have yes. to you have to nuance that a little because um, some fundamental. Christians believe that the woman doesn't have a choice. She has to make herself available for her husband whenever he feels yeah, up exactly. to it. So in that case, exactly. even though if she doesn't want to do anything at that time, she still has to because God said so. And therefore, it's not rape. Right. It's just her committing herself to whatever God wants. And yep. yeah, disgusting that, stuff. Yeah, yeah, that that is disgusting, but I mean that is just the way these people think. So to them, in all honesty, it isn't rape. It is just what God commands and the woman just has to uh do whatever I mean she needs to do. They can call it whatever they want. A spade is a spade. It yes. Is, still rape, I'm so. yeah, but I'm I'm saying um, in their in their mind it's not rape. In their mind, it's just what? being being uh, good towards well, God. Well, yes, I understand that. Following but like, the commands. In that case, I would say someone should therefore explain to them, "Hey, this is uh, this is wrong, actually." And sorry if you don't agree, but like, it's still wrong, you know. Anyway, um, Johnson then argued that this path led to school shootings and blamed these shootings on students being taught evolution. Uh, quote, and people say, how can a young person go into their schoolhouse and open fire on their classmates? Because we've taught a whole generation, a couple of generations now of Americans, that there is no right or wrong, that it's about survival of the fittest, and you evolve from the primordial slime. Why is that life of any sacred value? Because there's nobody sacred to whom it's owed. None of this should surprise us, close quote. Of course, of course. Uh, there were no like public shootings prior to the 1960s. That just didn't happen. Mm -hmm. uh, there was no war, uh, no no rape. Um, no. People weren't violently abused or anything like that. None of that happened prior to the 1960s. It just didn't exist, right? It just didn't exist. Of course, you know that that's that's all a lie. It's all a grift. This is all a grift. None of this mm -hmm. is real. He knows it's not real. He's saying this just for to to achieve power. Yeah. Uh, Johnson was showing a slide presentation during a sermon. During this segment, Johnson displayed a slide showing an atheist banner, women's rights protesters, and coverage of the Sandy Hook school shooting that claimed the lives of 20 children and, and six staff members. Remember, uh, Sandy Hook was an elementary school, guys. I guarantee they were not being taught evolution. Mm -hmm. They're like kindergartners, right? And well, I, I, ones... think he's, I think he's referring to the to, to the one who was doing the shooting. Me, yeah, I guess. But 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 still, it's of course ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. Um, and like when you actually look at school shooters, a lot of them, it has nothing to do with evolution. When you no. look at their manifestos, yeah. the, a, yeah. the 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 like four chan posts and the subreddits that they're going on has nothing to do with evolution. It's about anti semitism. It's about uh, incels. It's about yeah, miso misogyny. Yeah, yeah, misogyny. Yeah. These are the things it's actually about. Yeah. What are we covering? <laughs> well, I just wanted to go over this article um, because Mike Johnson, who's a Louisianian just like me, um, uh, is now Speaker of the House, and he's uh, stupid. So uh, Johnson's statement indicates he believes that evolution means teaching no morals, believing in no right or wrong and having no no value for life. Johnson also sees evolution not as potentially complementary to a biblical faith, but views it as some fundamentals Christians do as the antithesis of his faith. Okay, remember also, uh, Johnson writes for Answers in Genesis. 
the answers oh, in Genesis boy. position is that anything that is not um like strictly adherent to their values, theirs specifically, is therefore evil. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <sighs> Oh, trail mix. Oh, you're a fellow Louisianian. Nice, nice. Um, well, like, I guess I probably shouldn't. Uh, it's, it's, gonna, a, it's a very I was black gonna knock someone else, but I was like, ah, I probably shouldn't. Oh. <laughs> Another it's, Louisiana. It's a very, sorry, go ahead. It's a very black or white. Uh, sorry, sorry, it's a very black or white view of the world where like everything yes. good is on your side, everything bad is on the other side. So you, so you, you associate everything that's bad with the other, basically. The other yeah right there's a, a cartoon that um aig likes to post it's like two castles with balloons and you know like the the aig balloon is like god faith uh family values you know stuff like that then of course the atheist mm -hmm. or the the secular side whatever is like atheism abortions murder and mm -hmm. it's like feminism yeah <laughs> feminism yeah because <laughs> women bad also apparently <laughs> Um. Yeah, and it's just it's silly. Uh, loser Anna, very true, Smitty, very true, loser Anna. Um. Uh, it, it, yeah, basically, it's like yeah, there was no abortion, there was no murder, none of this stuff existed before evolution. Lousy Anna, also true. Um. Yeah, savage pen bovisitation cobra. Cobra. It's the viewpoint of a child. Yes. Yeah. One hundred percent. Yeah. This black and white. There was no murder in the world before evolution came along in the mid 1800s. <laughs> you know? It's like it's very silly. Um, well, they they would say that murder has increased after the introduction of evolution, which is not true. Either. Which also not true, right? Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. A violent crime has actually gone down significantly over the last hundred years. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. Uh, which is more of a function of of um uh, of like income inequality. Rather than yeah. uh, rather than whether or not you're a Christian or not, it's yeah. Um, the implication of Johnson's belief that the teaching of evolution is to blame for school shootings ultimately blames educators and scientists for school shootings. Of course, you know, according to Johnson Johnson's, these people need to work on their grammar. Jeez, Louise, he's lumped atheists and women's reproductive rights advocates in there too, right? Because women bad, women should be property, women bad. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Of course, there he is with Trump. Yeah, of course. Yeah, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's probably the reason why he was chosen as a Speaker of the House because he's still a huge Trump fan. So, and well, the, and they the still have to is, please the the dear leader. I guess that's still a thing, right? And the funny thing about McCarthy is McCarthy could have actually been bipartisan if he had been less about blaming the democrats for everything he could have actually been uh a bipartisan and fairly decent uh a speaker but no he had to toe the line of it's the democrats fault for everything and like outright lie that it was the democrats who were going to shut down the government when government shutdowns always occur under uh conservative uh majority uh, uh houses but you know whatever who needs facts right mm-hmm Blaming evolution and the lack of societal piety allows Johnson to be off the hook politically for addressing the mass shooting and gun violence epidemic in our country. Um, for Johnson, the answer to mass shootings is mass survival, not common sense gun laws. Don't expect Speaker Johnson to offer any legislative solutions to prevent school shootings. He's too busy blaming school teachers. I do also <laughs> want to point out yeah. one one other. There's a meme that I mean, it's not, it's not a meme. It's a picture that circulates every so often. Because conservatives tend to respond to school shootings by saying the problem is mental health, which, yeah, I mean, to an extent, yes, mental health is a is definitely a problem in the U.S. because we have garbage, uh, both health and mental health um, uh, facilities. Uh, the the ability of people to afford going to these facilities is is not great. Um, well, I, I'm I'm not sure if that's like uh, there is a mental health problem, of course, but I'm not sure if that is the re like underlying reason for this. Well, well, let me, let me finish. Let me finish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah sure, so, sure, sure. Sorry. Yeah. So when conservatives say the problem is mental health, I, I, on one hand, yeah, I'll say I'll acknowledge. Okay, there are mental health problems in the U.S. I I, I also don't think mental health is the issue here. There are there's a much um, more obvious issue, and that's access to guns. But 
there was a there was a um a, a vote on a bill uh regarding like implementing better um mental health uh like or implementing like better access to mental health um resources in schools and conservatives almost entirely voted it down so it's like when they say it's a mental health problem they don't actually mean that or they are let me they don't actually believe that they don't believe when they say it they're just placating their base so yes they oppose funding as smitty says they oppose funding mental health care that by their own logic they support school shootings yeah yeah exactly 100 percent. very true um Oh, yeah, David Ekstrom also points out uh, that uh, you can chart lead removal in an area which directly correlates to reduction of violent crime. Yeah, uh, there, yeah, there's a chart about that. I've seen it a few times, uh, which is kind of interesting. There's also, uh, there's another one along those same lines, David, uh, that's like uh, the removal of lead pipes correlates with like the end of the baby boomer generation, which I also think is very funny. <laughs> um, so... So anyway, or the, like when they're when they were young. <clears throat> so uh, <sighs> yeah, also, yeah, if I, if I if I oh, do you want to finish first? Sorry. Oh, that was it. Yeah, that, that was it. I, I'm reading something from uh, Columbia University Department of uh, Psychi Psychiatry. Okay. And uh, it it uh, like a one section. It says uh, we demonstrated in our paper the contribution of mental illness to mass shootings has decreased over time. The data suggests that while it is critical that we continue to identify those individuals with mental illness and substance use disorders at high risk for violence and prevent the perpetration of violence, when does the sentence end? <laughs> other risk factors such <laughs> as other risk factors such as a historical or legal problems, challenges, co challenges coping with severe and acute life stressors and the epidemic of the combination of nihilism, emptiness, anger, and the desire for notoriety among young men seem a more useful focus for, preven for prevention and policy than an em emphasis on serious mental illness. And I can link the, yeah, the page to it in the yeah. chat. It seems pretty interesting. It also, they, also they also link to their publication, like a professional... Uh, paper. I can also link the paper as well, yes. like an actual actual published paper in in a journal. Oh, the link is too large to be posted. Uh. So I can uh, there is a in the in the article that I linked contains uh, another link, basically in the text somewhere. Okay, gotcha. To a study, yeah. Okay, neat. Yeah, I, I'm not surprised that a feeling of hopelessness uh, factors into it, especially when, mm -hmm. like, for instance, you, uh, you know, you vote for, you know, you vote for someone who you think has your best interest at heart, then they don't do literally anything to help you at all. I'm not surprised that you might feel increasingly hopeless. Um, but I, know, I, that, I feel increasingly hopeless when I see people like this still still holding office. I mean, it's it's and it's not just this because this guy is also a conspiracy nut so he believes in several yes. weird conspiracies but i mean so well, maybe I'm sure that's, he thinks the election was stolen he, you know. <laughs> he does he uh he still thinks yeah. that uh trump is president obviously uh right so <laughs> but maybe who knows maybe he joined the government so he can stop uh uh, chemtrails you, you don't know what motivates people like this it's just yeah yeah i mean smitty's right you should go by their their uh record not their speeches which is why it was so funny to me when uh, jim jordan was offered as speaker of the house when he has supported zero zero bills that have been passed in his 16 uh years his 16 years of service and he has sponsored zero bills that passed, not a single one. So that should tell you, uh, no, he should definitely not be Speaker of the House. And thank goodness no. he isn't, because he's also an idiot. We did a whole video about his idiocy, uh, where he argued that the government is in debt because of salmon studies uh, or, or plankton studies. So, yeah, very stupid. Um, he He's also uh, apparently covered up a lot of, like, sexual abuse uh, in his tenure. So there's that. But anyways. Yeah. Anyways. 
American fascism go burr. Yes, quite so. Um, anyway, so enough of that funness. Well, well, one, uh, so one, one, well, someone, one thing. Someone is wondering if I am. One, one oh, thing. Sorry. One thing you didn't cover at the bottom of the page. I don't know if you saw it, but I, I mean, Trump praises cat turd account. It's. I like. Yeah, the, I so like. For I like the picture. Aware, it is a funny picture. Cat turd. For anyone who's not aware, is also a fascist uh, on ah, Twitter. I okay. actually don't know if he's still on there anymore. Um. So he would post, again, all kinds of conspiracies and transphobic and racist oh, stuff all the time. Um, then, of, And of course, Elon Musk, the one of the richest men on the planet, um, would like signal boost cat turd because, because that's what you do when you have sure. lots of money. You boost sure. a bunch of, of racists and fascists, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, not just cat turd, Ian Miles Chong and... Uh, trying to think who else uh I, anyway you get the point like lots of races mm -hmm. um it just it's amazing wonderful stuff hilarious things uh that you do when you have lots of money and lots of time on your hands i guess anyway moving on i actually you know what no i'm going to end the segment on a hopeful note i'm a very pessimistic person by nature but i am quite hopeful for the future because if you look at polls young people uh the younger the generations go the uh more liberal they lean and so um my generation is extraordinarily liberal like the most liberal so far <laughs> uh, and of course a uh, generation alpha is not old enough to vote yet but i'm given the trend i'd be willing to bet that they're going to be even more liberal than my generation so you know there's that um so I'm actually quite hopeful. I think this is like the last gasps for power that these conservatives have. And then once uh, people uh, my age all start voting like as a block, then um, it's kind of the end for conservatives, at least for now. They may come back in the future, but it, it's going to be bad for them in the near future. I, so I, I also I also think that many like even the conservatives among the young people are also like, what the hell is happening to our party? Like, uh, like they're also a bit, a uh, bit of, uh, like not, like not, maybe not liberal, but they are still like, mm -hmm. they want the uh, old school mm -hmm. Republican party to be back at the instead of Trump. They want something like Mitt Romney or something like that. Like the, uh, the previous more, um, version. Yeah. More centrist leaning. Yes. Yeah. More, yeah. more sanity. <laughs> right. More yeah. San yeah. And listen, I'd be, I don't like the, I don't like the GOP, but yeah, I would prefer a Mitt Romney over a Trump any yeah. day of the week. Just yeah. yes. Yeah. So anyway. So anyway, I think there's reason to be hopeful. Um, you know, it things aren't great right now. They're 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 meh, but I think there's reason to be hopeful. So anyway. All right. <clears throat> so we are going back to school again. Uh we are continuing with uh, Nestle. You weren't here last time. We moved on to the the next chapter, which is about human evolution. It's yeah. a, what, they, what is it called? Who's your daddy? I think. Yeah. Um, which th that's like their one joke. It's their one joke about human. Uh, is, it, is it the same yeah. title as the, the the chick track? Like I remember. Like there's like yes. uh, You also know these yeah. chick tracks, and I think one of them is also called Who's Your Daddy. <laughs> yes. Yeah. The one about yeah. evolution is is Who's Your Daddy. Yeah. yeah. The one, the yeah. one that so, is, was um, famously I, was famously rewritten by our dear friend Kent Hovind. That was mm -hmm. the one that Kent Hovind redid just before uh, it uh, left for the eternal uh, uh, hunting grounds, in the sky, where he's now. <laughs> I actually do want to point out one out more comment to uh, everyone in heaven. Is that what we're calling it? Uh, <laughs> is that where you think you went, Peter? You think you went to heaven? Yeah. Um, oh, actually, Vandalia1998 for four ninety nine says, guess it depends on how far the spectrum goes. I heard that people considered conservative 30 years ago would be liberal today. Um, that's possible. Uh, if they're more centrist, uh, they're liberal by modern conservative standards, <laughs> which mm -hmm. you have to remember, in general, for america everything is shifted to the right of europe yeah. so 
like our progressives like bernie sanders are like normal liberal for europe whereas joe biden who's like just slightly left of center is like on the right for europe uh and yes. then like trump um jim jordan these other idiots are like way 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 out there whereas for us they're normal conservative you know so there's that um so you're right you're right vandalia i do want to point out um instablock 404 says i don't like what's happened in the last few years either i'd like the freedom of julian assange might be soon i i doubt it i doubt assange is going to get amnesty i would also uh appreciate it i don't think whistleblowers should be um yeah. jailed uh really i haven't read too much about assange uh i have read a lot about uh snowden though snowden's uh he definitely deserves amnesty um the arguments that like oh he put soldiers lives in danger no he didn't he just factually did not there is no evidence that he ever put anybody's lives in danger by releasing uh information re relating to stellar wind there is no evidence of that. So, um, yeah. So I think I think Snowden should uh, be allowed to come back. I think he, you know, and he actually has a kid now, believe it or not. He um, he and his wife are in Russia, which they did not flee to Russia. I also want to point out when you. So basically what happened was he was in Hong Kong and when and he just he decided to fly to Ecuador. When you're in Hong Kong, the connecting flight to Ecuador is through Russia. You basically have to take a flight from Hong Kong, bounce to Russia, then get on a big plane to take you all the way over to Ecuador. And so, however, uh, John Kerry uh, canceled his uh, citizenship, uh, canceled Snowden's citizenship while he was on the plane from Hong Kong <laughs> to Russia. And, and so when he landed in Russia, he was not a U.S. citizen. So he had no point of origin and he could not go to ecuador so there was that um he couldn't uh, i don't stargate? recommend reading his what'd you say i said he couldn't dial the stargate i'm sorry i i i'm i'm i keep the talking to, to hathor on on twitter and i'm currently re-watching all the stargate episodes but yeah that's the last symbol you put you punch that's the point of origin so if he lost his yeah, point of origin, no, he he can't do dial, he can't dial <laughs> anymore. That's that's ah, that's him screwed. Yeah, not going to get out of that. Yeah, no, he he couldn't do it. He uh basically he landed in Russia and the uh, and they were like, ha ha, welcome. I, but he, he he lost citizenship <laughs> because because of the of the same the same reason that or is it, is it a different story for from Assange or are they related? The uh, Snow Snowden. Well, I know Assange is also a whistleblower. I don't know about yeah. the state of his citizenship i i think he was like being bounced from like embassy to embassy for a while and then yeah. he finally got like kicked out or something like that i don't i don't quite remember the whole story i don't know uh I don't... Snowden, though they were yeah it was just like he um he basically touched down in russia and they were like hey friend come with us you know <laughs> <laughs> hello so, comrade um, <laughs> hello comrade yeah um so anyway all right creationism Let's, uh, let's jump right yeah. in. Ooh. <laughs> so last week, I got stuck on... Um, where is it? Oh, the top one. Okay. I can explain that some scientists have claimed Homo habilis was a link between Australopithecus and Homo, but that prominent studies have found habilis is more similar to living apes than were other Australopithecines and should be classified within Australopithecus rather than Homo. Okay. So this blew my mind. I had never heard this claim before, but, or, or, or so, I guess I should say. Um, so I asked our favorite primatologist her thoughts on this, and she was kind enough to give me some thoughts. Um... So basically, what what they're arguing is that Homo habilis, the inner ear of Homo habilis, is more similar to um, to uh, uh, living great apes than it is to Homo and other Australopithecines. So according to this argument, what they're saying is that 
uh, Homo habilis is basically like at the very base of Australopithecines. Now, of course, that is an insane argument, and there's a reason I never heard it before. And that reason is this. <clears throat> uh, uh, this is coming directly from, I'm quoting uh, Erica on this. Quote, Homo habilis does have a basal inner ear. So do most Australopiths. This inner ear suggests they are doing a lot of climbing, as it looks a lot like other hominoids today. This is not controversial. The phalanges, shoulders, and limb proportions of late Australopithecus slash early Homo confirm they were not fully committed to the ground. I suspect when they say that Habilis is more basal than Australopithecus, they are comparing a late Australopith to an early member of Homo, probably Africanus slash Sediba, who are considerably younger than Habilis at 1.98 million years ago compared to 2.8 million years ago. The killing blow to this argument is Habilis is striking in its derived face and teeth. If the brain case were larger, no one would have an issue with it being Homo. <clears throat> so you have an early Homo, the same thing as we see in late Australopithecus, a strange mosaic of basal and derived, sometimes in unexpected combinations supporting the notion that there is a bush rather than a linear progression here. For instance, Australopithecus afarensis has a more modern intermem intermembral index than Habilis, despite being older. This could mean the trait is flexible and Habilis regains some arboreal limb proportions, or Habilis is an earlier offshoot, or even that afarensis yields Kenyanthropus instead and then Homo. But creationists always ignore the face of Habilis, the many faces we have. They look modern compared to Australopithecus and clearly exist at the base of our genus. <clears throat> Close quote. So, basically, what they're doing is equivalent, what, what the creationists are doing here, is equivalent to saying, here's a hundred pieces of evidence for the, um, the, the homo position of Habilis, but ignore 99 of them and focus on only one thing, and that's the inner ear, and then just pretend that's the only thing we have. Obviously, that is insanely dishonest, right? I mean, that it's just, it's crazy. Uh, turns out talk.origins also has an article on it, and I'll link that in the chat right now, because they, they talk about it, but they go through this, this crazy quote or this crazy argument, sorry. Because apparently Gish also made this argument back in the day. Oof. So that's an old that's an old argument then. Probably. Who's sur so it but isn't it funny though that like this is the Discovery Institute. They're trying to pretend to be more serious, right? Than like AIG. And yet they're using the thinly same veiled. argument. <laughs> yeah, right, right. Thinly yeah. veiled, of course. <laughs> but they're using the same argument Dwayne Gish did in the 1990s. There's no difference here. This is a single A to B to C progression. It's really kind of pathetic, honestly. It really is. Um, had you ever heard this argument before, Nestlig? Uh, about the, uh, is it like the, the semicircular canals? Yeah. I think so, yeah. I, I've not heard that argument a lot. Like I, I've heard some references to the inner ear, but not as a main argument that is repeated over and over again. It's maybe like a very fringe argument to be, that I've heard. Yeah, yeah. I uh, yeah, and I uh, I had never heard this argument. This one this was a new one on me. So this is a very fringe argument. This is like something even answers in Genesis doesn't use. Right, that's how fringe this is. So they're they're really, really scraping the bottom of the barrel with that one. And I remember, also, 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 sorry, go ahead. Uh, so oh, I was saying, also um, yeah. The Discovery Institute's point man on um, anthropology is Casey Luskin, who is ostensibly <laughs> not an anthropologist. He's a he's a geologist, right? I think, I think so. He's yeah, a geologist. So anyway, what were you saying? Uh, I, I was saying like a, a, a 
uh, nonsense aside, uh, it's still interesting to see that maybe Habalis was like uh, a very derived uh, offshoot at the, at the base. Like, yeah. Instead, instead, of, like it, it, it went more, it became more specialized for climbing, basically, perhaps. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, it, that, that's true. Yeah, um, because obviously we we don't have a very extensive fossil record for early Homo. So yeah, this could be an early branch, right? Rather than like, it's, you know, probably not a direct line from like Australopithecus to Homo erectus or something like that. Yeah. So yeah. Like Homo cool. habilis was probably not a, like a, like a, uh, like a Homo erectus probably was an ancestor to our line. Right. Yes. At, at least the, right. at least the, the total group, like you have, you have some erectus subgroups and some of them were not like our ancestors but, mm -hmm. but erectus, erectus as a whole was the uh the parent to our species or at least one of them but habilis probably not okay. yeah right yeah uh i can explain that some missing links have turned out to be frauds or wrongly interpreted fossils including yep of course piltdown man promoted as the human ancestor in the 1920s but later exposed as a forgery constructed from the jaw of an orangutan in the skull of a human Okay, very briefly on this. Remember, Piltdown Man was made by a non-scientist to fool non or to fool scientists. It was not made by scientists to promote evolution. Yes, and it was basically discredited within ten years of its discovery. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, of course, when actual human fossils came in, um, it, like Piltdown Man, made no sense. It didn't look like Australopiths. So yeah, it was just it didn't make any sense. Yeah, it, 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 it didn't fit anywhere in the uh, the, the human family that uh, emerged when you found more more and more fossils. Like like where, where right. the hell does Piltdown Man fit in all of this? Like it doesn't make any sense. Yeah. And, and it, like yeah. morphologically speaking and uh, geo uh, biogeographically speaking, also it just doesn't right. make sense. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, hundred percent. Wasn't that uh, wasn't, also that, like, I, I, wasn't if, that why it was rejected by scientists almost immediately because it it didn't uh, fit yeah, yes. in oh. anywhere with within the knowledge that we had back then of human well, part, evolution. That, yes. that was more. That, that, that was more late. I think that that was more late. That was later at first. Yes. Uh, yeah. There was some. There was a, a study by a French uh, researcher who noted that um, it was like it looked like it had been chemically treated, which of course he was right. Um, it, it was yeah. chemically treated. Um, and so, they, like, like I said, that was recognized early on that they were like, yeah, yeah something seems off about this. And it's a bit, so. bit fishy. Like, a, like the, the only, like, the most scientists who accepted build down men were, were British, mm -hmm. and again, you, you had some French paleontologists, like you you mentioned. And I also think the same, the same guy behind Nebraska man was also skeptical of uh, build down men, right? Like, I forgot his name, the one of the one. Who proposed that a tooth was a human ancestor? Oh, like who is a uh, Nebraska man? Oh, um, oh goodness, what was his name? That wasn't uh, what was that his name. It was one of the guys from the Bone Wars, wasn't it? He was like right around the same because he was he was involved in the Bone Wars in like the late eighteen eighties. Oh shoot, mm. Osborne. There we go, Osborne. Yes. Os Osborne. Yeah, he also, he also expressed the skepticism of built down man. Yeah. 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 Um, and two, Ramapithecus, 1960s, promoted as a human ancestor based solely on teeth and skull fragments, but when more complete specimens were found in the 1970s and 80s, it was reinterpreted as an extinct orangutan-like ape not ancestral to humans. Okay, fun fact about Ramapithecus. Or, well, actually, uh, yes, yeah, they're 100% they're right about this. Ramapithecus is a, a uh, like a basal uh, pongine, so they, they are correct. Um, however, uh, Lufangpithecus... It, who is also considered a, a basal uh, pongine, at least one species of Lufang Pithecus might not actually be a pongine, but might be basally derived with respect to all of the hominids. So hmm. it might represent a sort of like a, um, like an like ancestral... A stem, like a stem hominid. A stem yeah, hominid. like a stem hominid. Yeah. The ancestral okay. uh, character state for, for the hominids. So, hmm. uh, But yeah, they're right. Ramon Pithecus is and we actually we also talked about this in um um the the creationist book we read way back um the the did man get here by evolution or by creation like you know who cares right 
who cares about Ramapithecus in terms of human evolution? It doesn't matter. Piltdown Man's the same way. If you read a paper on human evolution today, like, you know, find a paper from 2023 on human evolution, you will not find reference to Piltdown Man or Ramapithecus. Nobody talks about them because they have no relevance unless you're talking about hominid evolution as a whole, right? Mm -hmm. But Piltdown Man is never referenced because it never had any relevance at all. <laughs> so, yeah. so them saying, oh, well, Ramapithecus used to be considered missing link. Well, okay, but it hasn't been for a long time and no one really cares. So why are you bringing it up? You know, it's like, uh, it's, it's, it's kind of silly. I, it, it's also like, uh, uh, I, I think they are like po projecting a bit, like they they believe their position is in, infallible. So if something is not fall uh, not infallible on the evolution side, and uh, added that they go, aha, see, your side is not infallible. So there, therefore, my side is better than yours. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, three Artipithecus ramidus initially proposes the most recent common ancestor of chimpanzees and humans, but found in poor condition. And eventually interpreted as an ape-like creature, not a human ancestor. So again, so they're being kind of disingenuous when they say this. Uh, one, yeah, Artipithecus is not is probably not the common ancestor of humans and chimps. So that's probably true. Um, mm -hmm. There are also older fossils which are closer to the to the split, like Sahelanthropus and uh, Auroran. Uh, so yeah, they're probably closer to our common ancestor with chimps. Um, I don't know what it was found in poor condition has to do with anything i mean we found multiple specimens so okay i um, like wasn't wasn't it like like before like there was like uh, a ramapithecus species discovered early from which we had little like little fossils of and they made oh, yeah. and they made and they made inferences about it and then we discovered uh, a new specimen i think rd which was more complete, and the complete specimen basically confirmed our rough ideas about uh, or Ramapithecus, right? You mean Artipithecus? Because Artie is an Artipith. Oh, oh, I, I'm, I'm confusing. Well, the two for men. for Ramapithecus, yeah, yes, yeah. it says here that the, it was originally based solely on teeth and skull fragments, and then when more complete specimens were found, they reclassified it among the the Pongines. So yeah, oh yeah, I mean, oh, yeah, I'm, I was confusing. Fine. Yeah, I was confusing Artipithecus. Yeah, I and I mean, that's fine, yeah. right? Yeah. Like, that's when we get more data, we change mm -hmm. our minds. That's that. That's how science works. Yes, you know, yeah. <laughs> what yeah. do you want? No, we should just stick to our guns and never change our minds on anything ever is yeah, obviously like, like what creationists they want. Do. Like, like creationists do, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. obviously what they want. Yeah. Um, And also when they say interpreted as an ape-like creature, and not a human ancestor. Well, it's probably not a human ancestor. It's ape-like in the sense that we're ape-like because we are apes. So, yeah, okay. And <laughs> um, I, there I, is one weird. I can't there is help. A weird feature. I, I can't help it, Jackson, because you just that you just referred to it as as Artie, and Artie being an ape-like creature. Um, mm -hmm. I have a co-host. Called Artie, and I oh, refer dear. I refer to him as an ape like creature. I mean, you you know him, <laughs> Artemis Brain Sample. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. yeah. I I think yeah, I think he might be an early humanoid creature. <laughs> he and I were actually uh, talking with some some people on Twitter today who were demanding to know how much uh how how much like information i've studied on demons and oh. i said do you have any information to study at all i don't think you do and they got really mad about that so I, i'm so going to i'm going to be schooled on that pretty pretty soon because i'm going to have a conversation with a young earth creationist about uh demons and he famously we has a video of arn Ra as part of his evidence for demons not kidding oh uh, well I mean, if if Arn wears some little, some little horns, I guess I could see it, you know. Arn um, Arn, but... <laughs> Arn wears horns regularly in in oh. his uh, <laughs> uh, uh, Bible Does show. He? Yeah, he's got he's got some great horns. 
Not 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 even lying. I I need to get some of those. That's pretty funny. Um, I yeah. Um, and it get and it gets funnier when he gets out a snake and the snake will just slide up and then circle his horns. He's he's also uh he had one snake trying to strangle him on stream. <laughs> not not kidding. Not kidding. Oh no. Um uh yeah, it's it's just they're very silly. Um we we should actually we should do a video on demons for the um the pseudoscience mm -hmm. and woo um playlist because we've only done like one video in there which was on the the miracles at lords which was fun i enjoyed writing that one so i'd be happy to do another video in that that sort of vein so anyway. like like uh, how it relates to like uh, epilepsy and other uh, other mental illnesses and such yeah 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 absolutely that would be super cool yeah that'd be a lot of fun yeah um anyway feature stuff I can identify problems with the conclusion that human and chimp DNA similarities provide evidence for human ape common ancestry by noting that one, a paper in science in 2007 titled the myth of 1% concluded that human and chimp DNA differ by much more than 1% as the, oh Jesus, as the statistic only includes single base substitutions and ignores longer sections of DNA that have been inserted or deleted. Okay. So fun fact about that. That much more than one percent becomes like two to three percent when you include indels. Yeah. Four. It, top, top. I, I've seen four tops. That's the okay. Yeah, yeah. Like, so yeah. you're like three to four. Okay, so it yeah. jumps. Yeah, way more than one percent. Four percent. Okay, you got me. I guess it's not one percent. It's four percent. Cool. You know, it's like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it's all. It's also like I. I also like to point. Always point out that. Like uh, putting a figure of uh, percentage is very mm -hmm. simplistic when you compare genomes. Like genomes can, like as as I said, you can have indels, but you can also have inversions and translocations between chromosomes. Right. So what, what you can do is you can you can do synthetic comparisons where you can say like, oh, this section of the of this chromosome matches this section of this chromosome in a different species. And what you can do in, in chimpanzees and humans is that every single chromosome matches to one another, right. except for chromosome number two, which matches to two separate chromosomes in no. chimpanzees. Yeah. Say it ain't so. <laughs> actually, we'll talk about that in the very next one. <laughs> the yeah. very next one. And it's also, it's also, you can also do another comparison between the mouse and the, the rat, mm -hmm. which uh, a creationist, ex uh, most of the Middle East, accept as being related. But... When you compare their chromosomes, you see a lot more inversions and a lot more translocations. Like, there is no contest. Like, we, our genomes are more similar to, the, to that of chimpanzees than m the mouse's is to the rat. Right, right, yeah. exactly. Or uh, lions and tigers, that's another one. Yes. <clears throat> and, and especially, you know, like house cats and lions or tigers, whom are all considered members of the same kind, uh, mm -hmm. according to creationists, but have way more differences uh, between them than we do with chips. Um, and we'll... we'll um, it's it, it's, yeah, we'll, it's we'll very... talk about that in a moment, uh, because we'll, we'll come back uh, to that it's a, very, it's, it's a very co cognitive hurdle. Like, we, like, people really overestimate how different we are from chimpanzees. We are, we are surprisingly very closely related. Like, mo most species on the planet are very distantly related from each other. Like, we are very close relatives, surprisingly. To most people yeah. yeah um two such genetic comparisons are often flawed and focus only on differences within within protein coding dna and ignore differences non-coding dna again as nestle just said that's a lie we can do whole genome comparisons nowadays and it's still you know at most four percent difference that that's like that's it it pretending that we can't do genomic differences is just lying uh okay three oh boy this is the fun part Human chimp DNA similarities might be as low as 70%, <laughs> depending on how one does the analysis. Okay. I can't possibly do this justice. Erica Gutsy <laughs> Gibbon already did yeah. a phenomenal video on, on just tearing this number to shreds. So uh, I also like how it says, depending on how you do the analysis. Yeah. If you do a very poor analysis, then yes. You could get 70% <laughs> if you do it very poorly, yes. 
depending on how badly you work this equation, you could get a different answer. Yeah. Yeah. If you if you don't know how to count and how to do simple calculations, then yes, you're going to get this figure. Yes. <laughs> right. Yeah. I I all I can do here is plug Erica's video on this topic because uh, she so she runs the analysis that Jeffrey Tompkins does to get this number. She mm -hmm. runs his analysis because there are a couple of things. Uh, for one thing, Jeffrey Tompkins, uh, one, he is a horrendous liar. Uh, so Ruhif, um, Glenn Williamson, uh, who, uh, who runs the blog Ruhif, used to get into arguments with Tompkins back in the day about how, hey, your, your um, analysis is wrong. Uh, Savage, Pan, Bovis, Atasha, Cobra for $2 says, to shreds you say. Yes, to shreds. Um, oh, I hear weird sounds. Oh, oh, they're gone. Um, so Jeffrey Tompkins and Rue Hiff got got into it back in the day over this, and Rue Hiff um, explained to Tompkins that there was a bug, there was an actual glitch in the program that Tompkins was using to run these analyses, and um. He kept uh, uh, Ruhiv kept sending in uh, the evidence for this uh, to Tompkins, to Andrew Snelling, who is the one in charge of the Answers uh, Journal, and they all just kind of blew him off. Well, wouldn't you know that Jeffrey Tompkins later co-authored a paper explaining that there was a glitch in the very program he used to do his DNA analysis, and of course he gave no um, no credit to to Glenn Williamson for that. So that was one thing that was very funny right off the bat. Yeah. I, and of is, course, my so is my mic uh, still making the sound? Yeah, no, it sounds fine. You sound fine. All right. Um, another funny thing is Jeffrey Tompkins only does this analysis for humans and chimps. And there's a very good reason as to why. So remember, humans and chimps have to be separate in the creationist worldview. They cannot be in the same kind. So whatever the DNA difference is between humans and chimps um, must therefore be greater than the difference between any other, uh, any organisms who are in the same kind, right? That just logically follows. So what Erica did was she then downloaded the, the DNA sequences for mice and rats, for uh, what, like lions and, and uh, house cats, I think. Uh, and there were a couple of other ones. Oh, and also for like two uh, humans of two different like uh, races or whatever. And so uh, when she did that, basically what, what she showed was that the DNA similarity for mice and rats and lions and house cats is way more different than the similarity, or sorry, is, is way less than the similarity for humans and chips. So by Tompkins' own analysis, lions and house cats and mice and rats cannot be in the same kind, right? They just, they can't be, yeah. based on that analysis. Yeah. So if, you use the same, if you use the same standard, then yes, yeah. Of right, course if you don't. use the same <laughs> standard. Yeah. yeah. Which is why they never talk about mice and rats in their analysis. Because if, you, if they put that out there, then they have to go, uh-oh, well, I guess every species is a separate kind then. And then you have problems with the arc. So anyway, <clears throat> um, do, do, do they have an do they have an excuse to why they don't apply it to non humans? Oh, I'm I'm certain it's just for that. Like I I think it's a grift. When you when you look at how obvious it would have, like that it's so obvious that the only reason that they didn't do this analysis on other organisms or even among two different groups of humans is just because it would give them the wrong answer. Like, I'm sorry. It's yeah. really hard for me personally to draw any other conclusion besides it's just a grift. Because I, I don't know how they could possibly, like, be honest with themselves and just not do anything else. You know what I mean? Yeah. I don't know. Maybe, maybe I'm being too pessimistic. Maybe I'm not giving them enough credit. But, like, that just seems really just 
frontally dishonest. I, I can't think of any other way to describe it. And Jake Nelson beat me to the punch on the next part. So Jake Nelson points out correctly, when Erica ran the human genome, she ran it against itself and it came back at drum roll 85%. Mm-hmm. So there is a 15% difference between two identical genomes. Where that and, that, 15- and, and that's the and that's the non-bug version, right? The, imp- the, the that is the non-bug improved, version. So, improved yes. version, yeah. That is the non-bug version. <sighs> yeah. Yeah. Can we also quick, quickly like quickly mention like how the analysis works, like basically. Basically, like I think, I think they just get, they ju- just search for se- segments. Like they, they pick one segment, and they uh, the, the program search for a sequence that matches the segment in the other species, and then they they just count up the number of segments, and they don't weigh them. Like if a right. 100 base pair segment has a 50 uh, percent match. It's counted as the same weight as a thousand base pair sequence with a ninety-nine percent match, basically, mm-hmm. which which gives bias to short to, to short segments, uh, as if shorter segments are more important. Basically, it's a bias. It's a bias. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. And um, yeah. DM scientist, chemist, auto mechanic wing also just pointed that out. Yeah. You're right. So so yes. Yeah. The analysis is bogus. The actual um, like results are bogus. It's it seems to me very obviously fueled by a bias for a particular result and against any other results that um, they don't like. Like just every every bit of it is bogus and hokey, and I think Tompkins knows that. Like I, I find it very hard to believe that yeah. he's doing this in all honesty. He just doesn't see the problems with it. I don't know. I could be wrong. All... He could just mm-hmm. be incredibly stupid. I could be wrong, <laughs> but I I have a, a hard time believing that. He's a legit PhD. He, he is in, legit, in uh, plant legit. biology. Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> it's also it's also fu- out funny in a. Uh, like a, a, a ironic sense, perhaps, or maybe a sad sense that, like the the answers in Genesis, they they will say that oh we we invite anybody to publish in our journal even if they disagree with us. But what what happens to who who if like the the bullshit he had to deal with? I think he talked to right. Snelling, right? He talked to Snelling yes. the whole the whole ordeal. He did, yeah. yeah. He uh, and Eric actually posts uh, their email back and forth, yeah. Yeah, and he got no credit for the paper that Tompkins and others wrote uh, exposing the the bug in the original program. You know, it's it, just got it's just just credit. damage control. That's all yeah. it is. Yeah. Um, what was the name of the software? I don't remember. Sorry, Insta blocked. Um, like I said, go watch Erica's video on it. Um, maybe I can post it here in the, in the chat. Let me let me uh. Let me go to her channel and I'll post that video. Um, I also got a shout out in one of her recent videos, which was pretty cool. So that was neat. Um, Let me see. Where is it? Where is. uh, No. Um, Oh, here it is. Okay. Okay. All right. Yeah, the pro, the pro, he, he used Blast, but I think like he made his own program that uses Blast, right? I think that's maybe that's I don't quite he, remember yeah, all yeah. of it. Okay, so there's the link yeah. to her video. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, have at it. Go, everybody should go watch it. Like everyone should watch that video. It's fantastic. It's a phenomenal video. I mean, all of her work is great. All of her videos are awesome, especially the ones that mention me. So no. yeah, <laughs> she, she 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 gets crazy views even for long videos. She gets just a, an enormous yeah. amount of views. Yeah. Oh, and she totally deserves it. Her videos are awesome. Yeah. Very good. Exactly. Yeah. All right. 
Uh, last one on this section. Four. Even if human chimp DNA is similar, this doesn't necessarily indicate that we share a common ancestor, but rather could indicate common design. All right. Remember, we've said this many times before. Intelligent design has no model. There is no model. They do not know what to expect. Yeah. They could their their ideas, their idea of intelligent design could either predict everything that we see or it might predict nothing that we see. They have no idea. They have no methodology for discerning design from non-design. Again, as we talked about infinite times on this channel, um, it's it's you can prove them wrong all day, every day, and all they can just they can just kind of back up to another position and say, well, it doesn't mean that the designer isn't real and you know yeah that's true but like it also means you're not doing science so we don't really have to care about you so okay it's also like it's also very weird like i su suppose that humans like we live in an alternative reality that you where humans have like a unique genome like there is very little match of our genome to any other organism what, like, what, what prevents them from saying, like, oh, it's still consistent with design? Like, we did the designer made us unique. Like, what, what, like what, what if humans had a, like, a DNA made of different uh, elements? Like, or maybe not, maybe a completely different chemical, even, like, not, right. not DNA, but some, some, some other, some mm -hmm. other different uh, basis. Like, uh, that it, would it make more sense. Consistent. That would make more would. sense for a common designer yeah. because why sure, would a common yeah. designer who designed us as some something special, something that has nothing to do with with animals, why would he create us using ape DNA? That that doesn't right. make sense. Like no, there is no counterfactual that would disprove their right their claim of like oh it's it can be a common designer. It depends. It depends. Anything, it yeah. depends on. So, um, Discovery U is is an intelligent design uh, proponent organization. Uh, if if you're going to go at this from a creationist point of view, it can't make sense that we have ape DNA because anyone recall how Adam was created? He was created out of dust, dirt from the ground. So he couldn't have similar DNA to an ape. That wouldn't even be possible. Well, you would think. So yeah. it's, a, I mean, it's a completely different creation from the creation of animals who were just spoken into existence. That didn't happen right. with Adam. So, right. yeah, the fact that he has ape DNA should make you worry about whether or not your creation story, because then dirt would have... Ape DNA? That's kind of weird, isn't it? Yeah, why not make yeah, why not make the DNA of humans totally 100% separate from all other organisms yeah. on the planet? That would be well, a fantastic a, way. It, yeah. Instead of X is it, is it, is it DNA have X and A, like a very different chemical perhaps right. or something like yeah. yeah. Like why not? Yeah, it's like not why a nucleic not a nucleic acid at all, not, you know, not ACGT, yeah. not, you know, why do that? Why do it this way? Yeah. Why? <laughs> of, of, of course, if you if when you ask so, such questions, then you get uh, somebody saying like, "Oh, like you are you are expect you're making a psychological objection," which is not even yeah. what you're doing. You're not <laughs> yeah, you're no. not assuming anything about the psychology of the designer. You're literally just yeah. which we had that whole conversation with Long yes. Story Short, and he never understood it. Literally, all you're saying is it could be done this way, but the designer chose not to do it this way uh also for four uh vandalia 1998 for 499 says i made a video about the designer and me and my guests rj and uh that godless engineer decided we need a refund because the designer was terrible very true i had my my appendix taken out can i please get a you know <laughs> some uh coverage from the designer for that i would very much like <laughs> it. also fun fact rj and i were literally writing the chapter on um vestigial organs when i had to get my appendix taken out so that was <laughs> very, 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 very that's kind of appropriate <laughs> though jackson yeah. i <laughs> mean that's dedication yeah. to to the subject 
Right. Just yeah, it was very dedicated to the bit. Yeah. Proving, <laughs> proving that you don't need it. Uh, that yeah, take that, Kent Hovind. Ah. <laughs> yeah. Um. Yeah. Would would not was not fun. Hashtag would not recommend. Zero out of ten. I, 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 I think like the, the only way a uh, hypothetical d design could count as an explanation is that you can ha you can ex you can explain it either by appealing to some constraint, like that the designer had no other option, and that's why it explains this, or you can show a intention, like you can show a reason for why the, the designers chose this way. But of course, they don't know what the, the, the the desires of the designer is so right. and and they and they also don't know what the constraints are so they don't have right. anything um and uh, uh dan stern cardinal as we, we've talked about this many times he also did a really good video talking about how even if you want to say like god was constrained in a particular way or sorry the design or uh, -huh, uh very different uh was constrained you know to make like functional genes in a particular way what about the unconstrained non-functional sequences if those were not designed then we should have very different unconstrained sequences right because they're just accruing mutations at you know yeah. at, at, at um, the same rate but in different ways so we shouldn't expect unconstrained regions to, to be similar and yet they are. We can still do a nested hierarchy, even in unconstrained, non-functional regions. And when you try explaining, although then you get, um, uh, then you get uh, um, ID proponents trying to be like, uh, oh, well, actually they are uh, constrained in some way. We just don't have any evidence that they are uh, under purifying selection and they're not correlated with actually making any uh proteins and this region doesn't have a promoter so it's not getting transcribed at a regular rate but it's doing something i swear it, it, it's doing something you know uh my and, unfinished and, and, channel and, and for even five, oh, yeah. my unfinished channel for five dollars says some fundy millionaire should start a creationist version of the hex prize <laughs> 10 million dollars for the first testable model of intelligent design yeah yeah hmm. i agree absolutely what were you saying Nessie? I, it's also uh, it's it's like it's also the similar truth for e even for functional sequences like for for mo for most proteins there's a lot, a lot of leeway for for them to to have a to have a particular function like even you compare for example uh, I think it's called the uh, what's it called the Pax six or the Pax nine for the eyes oh Pax six like yeah. either, and the mm -hmm. Pax six like if you com if you compare the sequence of the protein for Pack six for fruit, fruit flies and humans. The sequence is very different, very different. But even there, even then, you can still s interchange them and still have a function mm -hmm. the, performing the same yep. function. Yep, so, exactly right. Like so, things like that destroys the whole constraint argument, even for functional sequences. Um, another one that's really interesting is uh, the Preston gene. So Preston is a protein involved in echolocation in both uh, toothed whales and bats. So it's the same gene. It's a homologous gene, like, you know, mm -hmm. Pax6 is homologous between us and fruit flies, but the actual sequence is quite different. So the sequence of Preston in uh, in toothed whales is most similar to the sequence in, uh, in, in um, uh, hooved mammals, like artiodactyls, because whales are a subset of artiodactyls. And so, uh, whereas for bats, their sequence is is not as similar, right? It's it's very different yeah. compared to the tooth whales. And so again, it's like, yeah, why would you why would you make two completely different like proteins, but from this homologous gene, you know, when they're doing basically the same job? It's just it's like why why would you do that? Why not? This is this would be a perfect instance for like because creationists love saying, you know, oh God can just swap designs, right? Like in the same way that a car designer can swap designs. Yeah, we can, but then we can, why we doesn't can that happen? Take, take a mode. Yeah, we can replace a, a one type of motor and uh, give it a, a different type of motor or maybe different right. wheels. Yeah, 
Right. Yeah. And with cars yeah. and, you know, cell phones and computers. Yeah, you can do that. Well, except for Apple, because they only care about pr- proprietary <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, products. But for other things, yes, you can do that. Um, however, that's not it, it's not the case with um, it's not the case with organisms that it's the same part. Right. The gene may be homologous, but the actual mutations that have accrued are different. Mm -hmm. which again suggests different uh, lines of descent. Whereas why not just use the same Preston gene, you know, the same sequence for both. You could do that, but they choose not to, you know, it's, it's like, yeah, God could leave evidence of his actions. He just doesn't want to. That's very true, Smitty. Yeah. Okay. Anyways, chromosome. Oh yeah. Chromosome uh, fusion. Actually. Okay. Before we get into this fun fact, everybody, uh, Nestlig and uh, Rational Mind uh, both started uh, editing my scripts with the Chromosome 2 Fusion video we did like yep, like that was five the fir- years ago. The first video, yes. That was the first video I yelled with, yeah. Can you believe that was like five years ago, Nestlig? <laughs> uh, time flies by, and I feel like we missed a few years because of the pandemic, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Or maybe even six years. That might have been six years ago. It was... I, uh, it was it was uh, while I was still at LSU Baton well, Rouge. It was well. Was it in 2017? I think it was. That was it must have been 17 because I was. Yeah, I was still at um at LSU Baton Rouge. So yeah, that was oh. six years ago. We've been doing this for six years, Nestle. Oh God, I was still in college. <laughs> I was still in college back then. Oh, I'm still in college. Uh, anyway, um, uh, okay. <laughs> And Peter and I have been friends now for about seven years because Peter uh, found me right after I, I started on um, on doing YouTube and, and Twitter and stuff. So that was about seven years ago. So, yeah, yeah it's kind of wild that we've been doing it for this long. 2016. So. In all honesty, I did not find you. That was a, a dear friend of mine from the UK, Sally, a.k.a. the Ouroboros on, on right. Twitter. She found you yes. and she started... Uh, messaging all of us, you need to f- to see this guy. I I found a really good one. You need to go watch his videos, and that's so basically, that's yeah how I got into touch with you. And that's um, shortly after that, we were in DM group with Apologia mm-hmm. and and a few other yeah. people. So yeah, it was a good time. It's all it's all all been a good time. All been a fun ride. Mm-hmm. Um. And we've gotten to meet a lot of really interesting people along the way, you know. But, we had we had anyway. we had Lord Cropes in that um, in that uh, DM group, the guy who makes the memes for people on Twitter. And if you yes, don't yeah, know yeah. Um, what I'm talking about, you can find all of his memes on Creationist gonna, Misconceptions. Yes, they're gonna go yeah. for it. Uh, Discord server, I posted all of them yeah. there. All righty. Um, I can explain that some evolutionists cite evidence for fusion in human chromosome 2 as evidence for human ape common ancestry because human chromosome 2 has a structure similar to what might be expected if two chimpanzee chromosomes are fused together at their ends called telomeres, helping to explain why humans have 23 chromosomes while chimps have 24. <laughs> this guy, why, why do they have so many run-on sentences? Jeez. Um, I can explain problems with claims that chromosomal fusions in humans provides evidence for human common ape ancestry by noting that one human chromosomal fusion only indicates two chromosomes became fused, but tells us nothing about whether our human lineage leads back to a common ancestor with apes. This is such a disingenuous argument. Oh my goodness. By finding they didn't know. Yeah. By finding a person with a with ten stab wounds in their back, that only tells us they were stabbed. That's it. That's all it tells us. Nothing else. I'm sure someone I, I, probably finds that uh, um, a little funny, considering she's going into forensics. Um, but I mean, obviously, that's a disingenuous argument. That is so bad. This is the equivalent of Kent Hovind's uh, "A fossil only tells you that something died." Like, yeah. come on, come on, I, that's stupid. Like, it, it reminds me of something I made, like, uh, 
was the, was the uh, crime, like, uh, how's it called again? Crime Scene Investigation, like a very old uh, a crime drama series. And I made a meme about uh, when I back can't open and says, um, uh, oh, all you know is it, it the, the person died and then the, the episode ends. <laughs> For crime right. scene investigation. Yes. <laughs> yeah, basically. Yeah, they find the dead body. <laughs> oh no, someone died. Dun dun, and that's it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Joe's over. Um. Yeah. Like. Uh. Like Law and Order or NCIS yeah. or something like that. Like. Nope. That's it. Yeah. It's yeah. Over. Goodbye. Yeah. Go home. It's over. Goodbye. Bye. <laughs> um. Like. No. That's. That's not how anything works. We all know this. Um. Saying. I mean, this is the equivalent of the Kent Hovind um, fossils only tell you something died. Like, again, disingenuous. I don't know what else to to call it other than, like, it's just disingenuous. Um, haha, the person I was referring to got it. She got the joke. Um, yeah, come on. No, this is bad. This is so silly. Yeah, uh, it's also, it also om omits the, predi the, the, pred the pred prediction, like, it's technically true that it like it the, the fusion doesn't like uh, prove in a philo philosophical sense, right? But, uh, yes. It, but it was but, but the existence of a uh, like a, like the the the, 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 the uh, telomeres in the middle of the chromosome and mm -hmm. uh, an extra centromere that was the prediction made before the, this chromosome right. was, was discovered. Yeah. Yeah, because um, the actual the size of um the the size of the chromosomes in the karyotype were larger so one yeah that we have a one pair of chromosomes fewer than all the other great apes do and two the actual size of chromosome 2 in the karyotypes was larger or is larger than chromosome 2 for the other great apes which is why it was suspected that Hey, it looks like a fusion occurred here. <clears throat> so, um, so yeah, so there's that. Um, two evidence for chromosomal fusion isn't as clear cut as is often claimed, since the alleged fusion point contains much less telomeric DNA than it should if the two chromosomes were fused end to end. Okay, two yeah. problems with this argument. Two problems. Mm -hmm. There's a, there's a there's an obvious problem and there's a, a more hidden problem here that they they don't want to talk about and they probably won't talk about. So the first problem is when they say it contains less telomeric DNA than it should, there is no um, actual delineation of what of how much should be there. Um, as Ruhif, who we mentioned earlier, has actually done the sequence. There is a lot of telomere DNA uh, or a lot of telomeric sequences. At the site, there's also um, a uh, um, there's also centromere DNA in the sp in uh, uh, like towards the end. So we have both the vestigial telomeres and a vestigial centromere, which we should expect. Um, but they're not going to say how much of the telomere of the telomeres we should expect to find, right? How many telomere sequences? Should we expect to find, you know, like at random versus how many should we expect to find if these are telomeric regions? So the telomeric region is like it's a repeat of six mm -hmm. nucleotides. What is, it's like, uh, do you remember what the TTA, sequence is? Yeah, TTA, GGG. Yeah. Right. Okay. So at random, there's like a, a fairly low probability chance of finding that sequence in DNA. And it occurs a few times. But there's only one place in the genome where it occurs repeatedly. And that's yes. telomeres. That is the only place. And of course, where does it occur in chromosome 2? One, at both telomeric ends, yes but also in the middle of the chromosome, which is kind of weird. Why would it occur there? Unless <gasps> maybe it's a two telomeres fused end to end. Whoa, who would have thunk it? Mm -hmm. Wow, crazy. Uh, and there's another problem. Also, yeah, I'll go, go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, okay, sorry. there's another problem. 
there is a telomere specific pseudogene that also sits mm-hmm. uh, like like I said it literally sits next to the telomere on like every other chromosome and telomere 2 has one right in the middle right next to the alleged telomeric fusion that's the uh DDX11L2 so yes. DDX11 is a telomere specific pseudogene it does not get transcribed with any regularity and it contributes no functional proteins. Yeah, um, I also think like, like, the, the, like the, it has a, a whole mm-hmm. family of similar genes called the DDX11 family, uh, mm-hmm. which are like all, all uh, every one of these uh, genes of this family is associated with telomeres. Yes. And the DDX11L2 yes. is specifically the gene that's often mentioned. Yes. Yep. Because it's right in the middle of chromosome two and it is slap dab right next to the alleged telomeric region. So you really want to tell me that the region that has a whole bunch of telomeric uh, repeats all together and is also right next to a telomere specific pseudogene is not a, a telomere. Like, come on, come mm-hmm. on. Let's be real. Also, it is. Also, what, we all know it. <laughs> one important thing to mention is that, that like the day they say uh, end to end fusion, it's like technically not how it happens. Like well, how it happens is it's called a Robertsonian translocation. Like like when a chrome like when two chromosomes undergo translocation, you have like one one sequence is swapped for another sequence in the other chromosome. But the Robertsonian translocation is like a very lop, a very lopsided, unequal crossing over, where mm. a very small piece of both chrom- of both ends of chromosomes are lost, basically. So that, that so that's why you have a little bit less than the original, but it's, it's but it's still mostly most of it's still there, most. Mm-hmm. Like if you if you look up, yeah. like I can maybe spell spell it, just Robertsonian, Robertsonian. And we know that Robertsonian translocations occur in other animals, like yeah. they've been obs- or they've been described in like the Muntjac uh, genome, which was published several years ago. They've been described mm-hmm. in, in like I think uh, was it was cows was another one, like and uh, there there have been several other animals. We we know that these happen in other animals, and creationists don't care at all when they do happen in other animals. They only care about it for us. That's it. Nothing yeah. else. Yes, they don't care. Um, so yeah, uh, and also chromosomal fusions happen in other animals. Like yeah. again, they don't care if you tell them a moss had a chromosomal fusion, they will shrug and just be like, "And what is it? What so? is a plant? What is a plant? <laughs> what is a plant? Right? That's not yeah. a dog or a cat." <laughs> um, yeah, but then if you tell them, "Well, humans have a Robertsonian translocation, and it." is indicative of our common ancestry. Oh, suddenly they care. Now it matters. You know, it doesn't, doesn't matter normally. So. But it does, Jackson. We're special. It does. Yeah, for us. Yeah, because we're yeah, special. Right. We're exactly. special. Uh, and number three, at most, human chromosomal fusion evidence merely reconfirms that humans and apes share similar genetics, which could be explained by common design rather than common descent. So again, no model. They don't care. It could be true or it might not be. They they just don't care. Um, but also, like, why? Why would why would God do it that way? Do you have any reasoning, any explanation, anything at all? Yeah. Again, again, counterfactuals. What if what what if there is no evidence of a chromosomal fusion, and then? Evolution would be in trouble because then we could we couldn't explain the difference in the number of chromosomes between humans and chimpanzees. Like it, it it only makes sense for there to be a chromosomal fusion to explain why we have a different number of chromosomes. But if there was no fusion, then the, it would make no no difference for the design explanation, quote unquote. So again, it it there is no constraints on their side. I, right. I think I think yeah, exactly. I think the designer gave us ape ears because the apes used to do what he told them to do, so he thought that <laughs> that would be wise to put those ears on humans as well. And still, we don't do what he wants us to do, so that's why we got <laughs> the, the flood. 
We didn't of listen. That makes sense. We didn't listen. Yeah. I can define human exceptionalism as a view that the human race has unique and unparalleled moral, intellectual, and creative abilities. I understand that ex that acts of extreme altru altruism pose a challenge to Darwinian evolution. Okay, two things. Um, I think all of us here acknowledge that human exceptionalism is a thing. Like, obviously, humans have intellectual capabilities that are not shared with the rest of the animal kingdom. I mean, we ha we were talking on a computer here, and I haven't seen gorillas do that yet. Um, but like, this is a change. This is a difference in degree rather than a difference in type. Mm -hmm. uh, well, chimps... I also, I also would get, I also would characterize a human exceptionalism as like, uh, like placing a higher value on those attributes. Like, of, of, of course we are the most intelligent species on the planet, but it's not like we are superior in a general sense right. because of that. Yeah. I mean chimps are better than certain things than us i mean elephants mm -hmm. are better at certain tasks than we are in say, the same goes for literally every species on the planet right yes. every species is exceptional in some way because they're adapted yeah. to a particular niche okay well and good now in our case yes we uh we have this these greater uh intellectual and creative capabilities yeah that's fine but like again other all other apes are intellectual and have creative abilities, right? Like they, uh, uh, chimps are in their stone age. They make tools. Now they're not the same. They're not using, you know, machine guns like we are, but they have tools. And at one point in our history, we also just used, you know, stones uh, as, as tools. So this is, this is again, degree, not type. Um, I would also say, that like uh, and Noam Chomsky makes this argument, you know, what we have as speech, our actual language, our syntax is not shared with any other extant species. There are no other species on the planet that have syntax mm -hmm. like we have. Yeah. Now, mm -hmm. chimps, gorillas, uh, corvids, you know, elephants, um, they have language in their own sense, but it's not like ours. They have nouns but they do not put a subject, a verb, and a predicate together like we do. There are no other species today, alive today, that do that. So in that sense, yeah, again, we're, we're, we are exceptional in that sense. So, um, The other thing, extreme altruism poses a challenge to Darwinian evolution. It really doesn't. Because if you know anything about like kin selection or group selection at all, this immediately is like understandable. Um, why would you, why would a parent die for a child? Because you know, probably intuitively, maybe not, you don't, maybe in like a Jaguar doesn't know, you know, um, literally that a, um, that, that their, their cub has, you know, their genes in them, but in an intuitive sense, because of evolution, <laughs> uh, parents look after their offspring. And so parents understand in a sense that their offspring have their genes and so the parent will give up their own lives or the parent will give up their own life uh to protect their offspring because the offspring has their genes like that's that's really really easy to comprehend i don't understand uh, Richard Dawkins, you know, makes the joke about how people who read the selfish gene, um, you know, uh, uh, reject it because they're like, oh, evolution is selfish. And so Dawkins said, I should have made the rest of the book the subtitles. So they'd be forced to read it. Uh, because half of the selfish gene is talk is about altruism. Right. Just just read the book. It's It's largely about altruism because. Selfish genes promote altruism. By selfishly trying to preserve your own genes, i.e. your offspring, you do altruism, or what looks like altruism. It is like apparent altruism, but it's not like actual altruism, right? So that altruism is very easily explained by evolution. I, I don't... This is nonsense. Also, I also, I also would recommend uh, talks by... Uh, 
Robert Sapolsky, if I pronounce yeah, Robert name Sapolsky. correctly. Yeah, Robert Yes, he wrote I, the I, highly re- I highly recommend his talks because he also goes into the subject of altru- altruism and things like uh, group selection as well. To, to, it is very, very intriguing as well. Um, Sapolsky was also in the news this, this past week because he has just published a new book uh, apparently on how free will is an illusion. So that's interesting. Um, I guess he didn't <laughs> have the free will to, to write that book. <laughs> <laughs> he was compelled um, to, do, to do so. <laughs> right. I have... Um, mm-hmm. I have um, Daniel Dennett's book, uh, Consciousness Explained, which is about, um, in which he also, I think, argues that like free will is not real. Um, he, although he's more from the philosophy aspect of it, and I, I'm intrigued to read uh, it. But I, yeah. I, I, I would consider like the like the, the, the libertarian notion of free will to be like incoherent. Like if I like for example, if I if I if I have two options to eat uh, chocolate ice cream or feces like i i want to choose the chocolate ice cream am i free <laughs> am i free in that sense like like do i have a choice to choose the other option like i'm compelled to choose the chocolate ice cream over and over the other option in this case like my senses compel me to do so i guess yeah yeah, yeah like awesome. like, well, like, well, like what, what, what does what does free will mean in that sense like do that like, do I do I only have free will if I am able to choose the feces at an equal rate, at an equal probability? Like, what like what does it mean to have it? Like, I'm sure there my, are very my, yeah long yeah. and deep conversations on the meaning of free will that we yeah. here probably don't have time to go into. Exactly, exactly, exactly. It's more, it's more, it's more on the philosophy uh, people. Yeah, it it would still feel. depend on the free will of the ice cream makers if they don't make chocolate ice cream you've got nothing to choose <laughs> i guess that's true also yeah mm-hmm. your free will is contingent on their will yes yeah, exactly so is it really free no you're you're a, a slave to everyone else whose uh choices impact your own so i don't know and, and here we are all, going philosophy all, of your, anyways, <laughs> all of your choices are impacted by the society you live in the society you grew up in right the the, the the way you grow up and the things you were taught, all of those impact your free will, believe it or not. Yeah, no, a hundred percent. Yeah, absolutely right. I agree. Yeah. So. Um, it's also like somebody, like somebody made the point, like oh, just did one last point, like somebody made the point, point that some people would choose to poop, but it's still not true free will. Like, like suppose, Suppose you have some individual who wants to prove free will exists by eating the feces. They were still compelled to, to, to do so because of other reasons. So it was still it was still not prove free will. <laughs> Ironically, yeah. Yeah, there, there are but still. Anyway, let's, there, let's, move, let, let's move on. Let's move on to the. There next are point. there are videos on the subject. If uh, so, two girls, one cup. No, we're no. moving on. We are <laughs> no, moving on. on. <laughs> moving on. I I. I I regret. I regret. Yeah, we are so see, demonetized. Yeah, I mean. <laughs> All right, Peter. Who's what's next? What's the next bullet point? <laughs> the next bullet point. Okay, let's. We have a chapter outline. No 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 no. All Here right. We go. Paleoanthropology: the origin of humans, studied by paleoanthropologists, is perhaps the most hotly debated evolutionary field. Biases and bitter disputes between researchers permeate the study of human evolution. Um, so funny enough, that's actually true. Um, that's actually true. So the uh, there are a lot of deeply bitter um, arguments about uh, between paleoanthropologists over uh, fossils. It, it's really kind of weird, honestly. I, I don't quite understand it, but you know, I'm not a paleoanthropologist, so maybe I just don't get it. But anyways. So uh, for paleoanthropologists, a lot of them, like if they find a new bone um, for all for like every new bone they find, they're like, uh, yeah, you know, we're going to call this a new species. This is Homo Georgicus, you know, when it's or it's Homo ergaster. Um, It's like 
Um, well, you know, we, we don't really need to rename every fossil we find as a new species. Uh, you know, we can probably lump some of these together. Um, like uh, both Georgicus and, um, and Ergaster are typically uh, under Homo erectus. So, you know. Um, oh, no, Peter, now you've got other people asking about the no look what you've done you've ruined everything <laughs> no not oh okay anyways yeah, Suma sumami said we we all three of us have seen the video i have not seen the video nor am i ever going to see the video because people told me what the video was about so no i'm not gonna watch that nope no 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 paleoanthropologist confidently oh offer i thought it said after offer accounts of human evolution but their narratives often conflict with one another and with the evidence that that doesn't mean anything this is like a weasley sentence this means nothing um uh okay dm scientist chemist auto mechanic wing for two dollars says paleo experts somewhere erica cringes yeah she's like she does the uh she's like sitting in her office or something and she's like i felt a disturbance you know <laughs> something <laughs> um Anyway, uh, hominids and hominins. Members of the family hominidae are called hominids, including humans, great apes, uh, chimpanzees, gorillas, and orangutans, and all extinct species leading back to their most recent alleged common ancestor. Okay. Mm, this is the fir first accurate bullet point so far that I've seen. <laughs> That's, uh, on Dapper's show, yeah. we would take a drink when the, um, when <laughs> the, when the creationist gets something right without, um, without uh uh you know without reading it uh hominins include humans chimpanzees and any extinct organisms leading back to their presumed recent common ancestor yeah uh hominins whether it includes chimpanzees or is just the human side kind of depends on who you ask i've seen it both ways but it doesn't matter for our purposes it doesn't matter Australopithecines. Australopithecus is a small brained ape like genus thought to have risen a little over four million years ago. When they say small brained, what they mean is it has a brain that's about the size of the other great apes, the other extant great apes. So the size of the brain of gorillas, chimps, and Australopithecus is about a third of our current brain size. About a third. Mm -hmm. We yeah. talked about this in um, the ha the Handyman's Tale. Yes, we talked about this in the Handyman's Tale in our Ancestors Tale series. Um, so if you're interested in... We did like eight episodes on human evolution. We did a lot. There's a lot of stuff on human evolution. Uh, in Latin, the name means Southern Ape since the first Australopithecine fossils were found in Southern Africa. Again, yeah. Um, Oh, shoot, I've forgotten the name now. Um, Richard Dawkins uh, says in um, Greatest Show on Earth that he hopes that there's like a fossil somewhere that is that is like the first Australopithecine, but it's like labeled something different because he hates the, the word Australopithecine. Um, dang, I can't remember what it is. Um, I, I'll probably remember it next or I'll, you know, I'll say it next time because I don't remember um because yeah australo just means southern ape yeah so <clears throat> also the, the the naming convention is pretty confusing about like you have yeah. the hominines and the hominins and the homininins basically <laughs> right yes. yeah and hom hom hominoids hominidae yeah it, it sucks um basically all this is what's called uh it, this is a typological uh phy phylogenetics so what you do with with uh, typological phylogenetics is basically you rename all your taxonomic ranks as like based on the typus for some genus or for some uh, taxon. So like, um, so for us, it's homo. So hominina, um, hominidae, hominoidea, those are all based on homo, which is us. Yeah. Um, they've done the same thing in uh, like... Um, uh, we talked about this in botany the other day um like the what is it the uh the zygomycetes are now like the mucoromycetes which 
the thing that's cool about zygomycetes is zygomycete tells you what the apomorphy is for the group. It's having mm -hmm. a zygote. Yes. Whereas saying mucoromycete doesn't doesn't tell you anything. It's like it's the the fungi that are like mucor. Okay. What does that mean? You know, like what? Um, so anyway, uh, typological naming conventions are really dumb. Don't do them. I, I, if we if have I, if I could, on watching, don't do it. <laughs> if, if I could rename, like the, uh, the the name for like for the, for the African apes is now called Hominine, if I'm not mistaken. Hominine, the African apes. If I could rena rename this group, I would rename this as Afro Pithecines. African apes, basically, literally. Okay. If I sure. could, yeah. Uh, if I could rename it, the Afro Afro Pitasi. Ah, Jamie yeah. E coming in clutch as always. Hemi Anthropus, yes, Hemi Anthropus. Thank you. Ah, you're always there for me. Um, yeah, Dawkins wants Australopithecines to be re renamed Hemi Anthropus. Um, yeah. Okay. Uh, many evolutionary paleoanthropologists, as a Opposed to the creationist paleoanthropologist, I guess, uh, believe humans are descended from Australopithecus afarensis, which includes the famous fossil Lucy. I don't think that's true, actually. I'm pretty sure afarensis is a branch close to Homo, but afarensis is not ancestral to Homo. Mm -hmm. I've only seen one paper that actually assigns a like an australopith species that is directly ancestral to homo and it was australopithecus garhi um not afarensis so yeah I, no i don't buy that um one important member uh of australopithecus that will receive attention is habilis very bold of them to rename homo habilis it as australopithecus habilis very bold of them <laughs> I like that they did, did, did they already did they, did, didn't they already spend attention to have a this like it's all it's almost like oh we will like it's almost like a short term memory like oh now we will give attention well to so the that was the outline oh, that was oh the, all right. um, yeah they oh, like outline right. the chapter and then they go through it step by step so ah uh, all right I see I see um but yeah a lot of it really is just uh just like review um, homo means man in Latin and is a genus that includes Homo erectus, Neanderthals, and our own species. Yep, that is true. Homo erectus, meaning upright walking man, is an extinct member of the genus Homo that is generally believed to have lived from about 1.9 million years ago until less than 100,000 years ago. Is generally believed... Hmm, that's kind of interesting. It's almost like they're kind of hinting that like they're okay with people being young earth creationists, but they don't want to just come out and say it. Like, remember when we, we did our, mm -hmm. our re rebuttal to LSS and he kept saying the conventional dates for whale fossils. Like, what do you mean? These are the dates. Why do you keep saying the conventional dates? Like, are you actually a young earth creationist pretending to be an intelligent design proponent? Huh? Below the neck, uh, yeah, it's like it's like imp impl in, in, in just just imply, but don't be explicit. Like it's like it's I I I I'm on the edge. Like I'm on, I'm just on the edge. <laughs> I mean, the but Earth then, might yeah, be yeah. six thousand years old, or it might yeah. be four mm, and a half knows? billion. Who's who to knows? say? <laughs> yeah, you know. Yeah. yeah, I I love they can just pretend to like not commit to a position. It's so so great. Um, below the neck, Homo erectus is extremely similar to modern humans, and their skull sizes are within the range of modern human variation. Okay, again, yeah, we talked about this last time. The difference is not the range, the difference is the average. So early Homo erectus have a smaller average skull size than late Homo erectus. Mm -hmm. Okay, um human skull size yeah goes from like way smaller than the average to like didn't oliver cromwell have like a it was like twice the average or something like that it, huge it, enormous brain capacity uh, allegedly um so like i mean again it's not the range it's the average that's what's important um it's kind of like 
you know, if you look at um, like the incomes for Americans, right? And you <laughs> could say like, ah, well, some people make a billion dollars per year. Well, yeah, some people do. That is not the average American's income, though. The average is way, 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 way lower than a billion dollars, right? And that's the same kind of argument here. And it's also, it's also, oh, it's also like, like, uh, of, of course, they, uh, they are, they, are they using absolute uh, brain content or brain volume, or are they doing the relative to the body size? That's also a good question. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I don't, I don't like know. All, like, all, like, obviously, small, small sized uh, Homo erectus would have a small absolute skull size, but that's not really the, not, that's not really the point. Yeah, I think yeah. they're probably referring to relative. Mm -hmm. I, I think they're probably assume. Saying, I'd say yeah, yeah. I, I would assume relative because they're saying the skull size is within the range. Yeah, uh, Neanderthals are a member of the genus Homo, dating from thirty thousand to two hundred thousand years ago in age. Uh huh. They look nearly identical, except for slightly larger and thicker yeah. skulls. Except, I mean, except for that. <laughs> yeah, I mean. <laughs> Yeah, also, except for the fact that they're, they are genetically also obviously very different from us. <laughs> mm -hmm. They fall way outside of our of our species. Uh, aside from that, that, that little minor inconvenience, they're nearly identical. <laughs> I mean, it's true. They are very similar to us, you know, in yeah. a lot of ways. They are one of our sister species. But so, they, they have, they have, like, the, I, I would actually say that the, the, the most striking difference is that they have no, no chin. They have no chin. Yeah, that's that the look, I think it's the most that would look very difference. odd. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You could probably get past the brow ridge. You know, they might look a little strange in the head, in the forehead, but like, yeah, no chin. Like, oh, that'd yeah. look a little strange. They, they, they are. They belong in the Simpsons because the Simpsons also have no chins. <laughs> yeah. Um, Neanderthals are commonly portrayed as bungling primitive relatives of modern humans, but anatomical, genetic, and cultural data suggest they were capable of speech and had art and culture. And may have been a sub race of our own species. Okay, it is debated whether or not mm -hmm. they had speech, uh, art, and culture. Also, probably, I think they did. They probably did. Um, there is no evidence that they were a sub race of our own species. Zero, none. Yeah. Who, who do you think they're most closely related to? Which race or which lineage? I guess I should say to be more specific. young Earth creationists. Uh, Young Which Earth lineage? Earth. Yeah, you got me there. Okay, fair <laughs> enough. Oh, uh, like who's the guy? Who's the guy? Also, again, uh, like a replacing Darwin guy, uh, Jensen. Right? Oh, Jensen. Yeah. yeah, yeah, Jensen. Like he, like he, he would say that uh, like Neanderthals are most closely related, or, or like a subset of Africans. Again, that doesn't work though, because yeah. all Africans are more closely related to Eurasians. All humans, all extant Homo sapiens, are more closely related to each other mm -hmm. than yes. any of us any single one of us are to neanderthals and like that's just yeah. a fact like we yeah, have except for like uh, interbreeding cases but aside from that we are like like a, a monophyletic group with right the neanderthals are outside of our group yes yeah the, the, we have the nuclear and mitochondrial genome of neanderthals we know that they are that they nest outside of our own species. We know this mm -hmm. for a fact. This is not a question at this point. It's it you're long past the data on this. Sorry. Get over it. We belong to the species Homo sapiens, which means wise man. Yep. Due to their high level of anatomical similarity, some would classify both Homo erectus. No. 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 Are you serious? Am I reading this correctly? Some would classify both Homo erectus and Neanderthals as members of Homo sapiens. I, I mean, I mean there are maybe some, but I have not heard about like I have heard about Neanderthals, but Homo erectus, I have not heard many many saying that. <laughs> I mean, if we want, listen, I'm a species pragmatist. So if yeah, we yeah, want to yeah. stretch this, the definition of species to include things that are drastically different morphologically from us, um, okay. But like, 
I think it's I think you've lost a lot of like the usefulness of the species concept if you start doing that. So eh I mean you could do that, but like, yeah, why would you? What would be the point? I don't see any reason to do that. This is bananas. Like it, it seems like they're arguing that we should include basically all homo all species within homo as our own species which is just bananas bananas a savage pan bovis cetacea cobra for two dollars says only paleo experts think that is that is that is that right maybe um most members of the genus homo are very similar to modern humans and the differences between the human-like members of the genus homo can be explained as a result of microevolutionary changes i <laughs> I mean, on one level, that's technically true, I guess, because macroevolutionary changes tend to be the result of many microevolutionary changes added up together. So I guess in a, in a sort of reductive sense, that's kind of true. But like, <laughs> I mean, ah, there are so many weaselly words in here. Like when you say the differences... Yes, there are differences between our species. Like, obviously, we're different species. But we're in the same genus. So there are similarities that unite all of us. But there are, but there are also some differences between us, which is why we're different species. And yes, those, those are the result of microevolutionary changes. But lots and lots and lots and lots of microevolutionary changes, which is why we're different, um, considered different species. Vendelli, 1998, 499 says... I've heard Homo sapiens might be a clade within Homo erectus, but not the other way around. Yeah, you're right. You are correct, Vandalia. We, as as well as Denisovans and Neanderthals, came out of Homo erectus. Oh, this is crazy. This is... Oh, this is just so crazy. This is so bananas. I love it. It's, it's so insane. Um, uh, Peter, can you scroll down a little bit, please? This is so bananas. Keep scrolling. All right, we're going to call it for tonight. Okay. We'll start with Australopithecus versus Homo next time. So I think we're done for today. Um, Yeah, we'll do all that next time. That's fine. <clears throat> all right, if you want to go back to the other uh, three screens. Hello. Um, Oh, I, you're, you're muted. Oh, sorry. Four. All right. Still here. Four, yeah. Four. <laughs> he hasn't given up yet. <laughs> our, our, our friend, our furry friend is back. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, um, this was bananas. This was absolutely crazy. All these uh, Neanderthals and Homo erectus are apparently within Homo sapiens now. That's a, a thing, I, I guess. I'd never heard that one before yeah. today, but fine, whatever. Um, I guess, you know, it's really not that far off from Dwayne Gish's chart of like it's either 100% human or it's 100% ape like this is kind of same ballpark stuff right this really isn't yeah. that different I guess if I think about it um, yeah, that, that, but there is, there is an, uh, an honest discussion to be had about like the species concepts and how, how yeah. difficult is it how difficult it is to infer Absolutely. species in for extinct fossil specimens but of course, they don't want to have like when you when you would ask them like on what basis like what basis do you, you say that they are the same species like they, they they don't have any basis like they just say so because they are interested in, in maintaining a narrative. That's all it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, hundred no, percent. You're you're right. You're right. You're absolutely right on that. Um. So, so that's it uh, for tonight. Um. Let's see. So Nestle and I have uh finished the uh, the leafy sea dragons tales so that will be the next video i'm very excited for that one mm -hmm. um and then after that is the pike's tale we're going to talk about uh the swim bladder Ooh, fun stuff uh so thank you everybody in the live chat for watching we had a pretty good turnout tonight uh we had consistently over 30 people for most of it so it was pretty good um so thank you, everybody, in the live chat for watching. And thank you, uh, Neslik and Peter, for uh, being here with me, as always. And uh, we will see everybody next time. Bye, everybody. <laughs>